But let's talk about some of the reports we've had out this week. Uh, some of the big names. Marcus Bogdan, CIO over at Blackmore's Capital, I'm pleased to say, has been patiently uh, waiting by. Marcus, thanks very much for your time uh, this morning. Can we start, actually, we were talking about Woolies and, and Coles. Coles, once again, under pressure. Um, your thoughts on where to f from here for, for Coles? They've just been spun out and suddenly they're already again talking about a, a review of their operations, a strategic shift. Sure. Good morning, James. Um, not, not surprising given what your, um, your other guest has, has suggested. New management comes in, uh, the re, they rebase the earnings, they rebase the, out, the outlook. Notwithstanding that, um, costs are growing at a faster rate than revenue, and that is obviously mm. a short-term issue. Momentum has come out of the business. Uh, there wasn't a any further growth from Little Shop or delaying the, the pricing of, of plastic bags, and the momentum you've seen in this last quarter has really been quite subdued and a, con and a con subdued uh, consumer as well. Uh, there's still risks in, in coals. There, there come very heavy capex as they spend over $900 million on, on two distribution centres. All of these things are incredibly necessary. But I'd be just slightly sceptical on, on how they've front-loaded a range of neg um, negative comments in, in the latest uh, report. Um, notwithstanding that, a subdued, a subdued outlook in, in the short term. But again, um, given what your other guest has mm. commented, the physical footprint of this business remains impressive. The market shares r remain impressive. Uh, and as a standalone business, I think there is still value there. We hold coals through the demerger of, 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 of West Farmers. Um, we're going to do a little bit more work around it, but in, in the short term, I think we, we continue to hold. Notwithstanding, I think it gets probably a little bit worse before it gets better. Mm. Uh, in comparison, Woolworths um, has invested a lot of capital in distribution and in, in logistics. It's reflected in their, in, their, in their premium, but they are executing better than, than Coles is at the moment. If you look at sales um, per square metre, EBIT per square metre, it is a more impressive business. Um, the valuation is, re is reasonably full now, but you've got the, you've got the ability for capital to be returning through, through the, the sale of the petrol business and potentially the hotel business. Can we talk about another stock? It actually came out last week, and, and for mine, it was one of the best results that we saw, and that was from CleanAway. Uh, the, sure. the underlying numbers from CleanAway were fantastic. I think underlying net profit was up over 50%. Uh, gross revenues as well up around about 45 46%. And you saw you know, a good bounce, and obviously we can see on screen the yearly performance has been outstanding, but backed up by a really, really good set of numbers. Yes, indeed, and, and you saw a number of upgrades fo following that result. Um, if you strip out sort of acquisitions and you look at the underlying growth, the sort of EBITDA growth of 15%, sales growth of 9%. So it's a business that's it's got the capacity to increase its margin. It's benefiting from being vertically integrated in, 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 waste, in waste management. Um, and the management have executed very well. I think there's still upside there in margin improvement, particularly in, in solid waste. Solid waste, it's their largest division, um, is gaining market share. They're winning long-term contracts. And now you've got a business with 80% of their revenue, which is reoccurring. So the visibility of earnings is high. The execution is, is excellent. I mean, you're now starting to see it more reflected in the, va in the valuation, mm. uh, but we're very comfortable in holding this stock uh, given its recent history and the ability to even improve returns higher from where they are today. Hi, Marcus. Gaurav here from Investmart. Um, we jumped on, on this when it was still Trans-Pacific and sold far too sure. early, so, so well done on keeping, yes. it, keeping holding. Yes. Um, one thing that concerns me a little about, about CleanAway is the hidden cyclicality. Um, back when it was um, Trans-Pacific, we were really shocked by the very strong correlation with oil prices. As, as when oil prices were removed, a lot of uh, came down, they, yes. they didn't have as much um, uh, waste um, to remove as well in the, on, on the industrial side of the business. Are you worried about the cyclicality in this? Clearly, I think waste volumes are cyclical. We haven't seen a cycle in sure. 30 years in this country. How do you, how do you deal with that? 
Sure. Um, I do think it is a very different company from uh, tra tra Trans Pacific. Um, I think you comment around the liquids um, part of the business, which is the oil sensitive type of the business, has had some issues and is obviously cyclical in nature, not only the un underlying product but subjects to commodity prices. Um, but the acquisition of TOX um, provides um, yeah. a, a new revenue stream in, in health in healthcare. Mm. Um, and, and I think primarily it is a sort of household waste, it is, it is um, it's a recycling of, of that waste and the landfill of that waste. I think, that, I think the earnings of, of Clean Away today are far more defensive than historically that they, they have delivered um, than in, pre, in, previous, in previous managements. Yeah, look, we had it in, in our portfolio, but we got out of it just before the result. Um, we were worried about what could potentially come out with the cycles that we don't see, sure. as well as what we were seeing through bingo-related uh, issues. Yeah. Um, but look, yeah. it's it's a great business and it's delivered. Yeah. And uh, you know, we reverse engineered this. This is one of the top six or seven high-growth quality businesses out there. Um, so you know. As I said, if you, you can buy it on a pullback, but it probably is not going to pull back. Marcus, just before we let you go, look, any other standout opportunities from what we've seen from reporting season so far, a, a stock sort of opportunity that you've um, that you think's out there? Um, we, we look at Brambles very, very carefully. Mm -hmm. um, okay. They okay. Um, demonstrated that they're still getting very good um, revenue growth of around 7%. Seven, seven um, cost inflation, which, is, which you're starting to see in a number of businesses now, really affected the bottom line. You sort of had um, uh, earnings growth there of around 1%. One, 1%. 1 but we do think that margins there have, have bottomed, particularly in the US business now. Um, they're investing heavily into automation because the costs have been on the tra on the transport side so longer term uh, we still think there's latency in that business and, and we like the strength of its of its franchise and its and its global footprint all right Marcus got to leave it there do appreciate you joining us this morning thank you thank you very much James cheers